So hi, I'm Audrey, and um, I'm very happy to share my experiences working with the French office in Taipei. Um, I've, I've been working on online uh, participatory democracy, or what we call the e-governance or self-governance, for the past 20 years uh, through the free software and open source movements. But in the past two and a half years or so, we're seeing that the real world politics starting to adopt more or less the same forms of online and share with the offline participation. And that's what we uh, in the Golf Zero community uh, has been working on in Taiwan. So um, this time, the French office in Taipei, in conjunction with Café Philo and the Open Culture Foundation, uh, invited the two experts um, from Paris, from France, uh, to share with us their uh, on-the-field experience working in participatory budgets and also with Professor saint Omer the comparative uh, picture of how people around the world are using not only the internet but also things like open space technology, things like nonviolent communication uh, to establish a more direct instead of you know representative kind of democracy. So I learned a lot. Uh, I volunteered as a translator, uh, translating the name, uh, the Chinese name, Minzhu Zhi Jie Dian, which means a more direct form of democracy, into a somewhat French uh, title called Democracy à la carte. Um, so, uh, and I volunteered to translate the two speakers' uh, slides, their PowerPoint uh, decks, uh, into Chinese and accompany them as interpreter, uh, along with uh, fellow interpreter Christopher, uh, to different Taiwanese cities like Taichung and Taipei and New Taipei City and so on. So it was very fruitful, I learned a lot, and I thank deeply for all the organizations and people who uh, organized this event. This was followed with you actually going yourself to Paris, mm -hmm and observe uh, the processes of voting the participative uh, budget in Paris mm -hmm. that Paris uh, and, uh, did in uh, September, I think, this year. Mm -hmm. That was a huge project and mm -hmm. there was something big happening in France. Mm -hmm. And you were there to observe it and also interact some more with, mm -hmm. Julien, Antelien, with Julien Antelin as well as other city hall, Parisian city hall administrative agents. Could you please share a little bit of these experiences with us and let us know what you observed and what you learned from that trip? Certainly. Um, I spent uh, every March and every September in Paris for the past three years now. So um, I'm very glad actually that the participatory budget program in Paris decided that anybody who lives in Paris between uh, 10th and the 20th of September is eligible to vote regardless of age of uh, whether I'm a European Union citizen or not, and so on. So uh, I think this particular trip makes Paris a little bit more like him uh, compared to the previous uh, visits for me. And uh, on the street of Paris, uh, I saw something that's very interesting to me personally. People were uh, having banners of their uh, ideas, like uh, how to make more diversity in the neighborhood, or that they are defending their rights to sleep, and so on. And they were advocating for specific projects in the participatory budget programs, which is all available online. So it's a nice blend of online information providing and offline activism. Because the associations and the people who make those kits, uh, the, the font and the size, they look very similar. So, and I learned that it's because the deputy mayors would organize the uh, walks along the city, on the different streets, to look at the streets, to look at the gardens, look at the parks, to see which part could use improvement and have a direct dialogue with the people and the associations around those different parts. So, uh, because I live in the Marais, in the third uh, district, so I learned a lot about the, that district, actually more than all my previous visits combined, just by looking at all the proposals online about that district and taking a walk myself to those different places to meet the people who advocate something for their neighborhood. If ever participatory uh, budget was implemented in Taiwan, let's say in Taipei, since mm -hmm. I think you are mm -hmm. living in uh, in mm -hmm. Taipei capital, mm -hmm. what would be the perfect or project for you to raise if you could raise mm -hmm. your your own idea, mm -hmm. or at least something because it has to be something realistic as well, mm -hmm. right? 
Yes. So, um, yeah, in, in Paris, I mentioned that I'm eligible to vote. So I actually did vote. Uh, I think one of the votes I did was uh, for the people in Paris to make a 3D model of the entire Paris city, including all its buildings, and open source it to upload it on the internet, allowing everybody with a 3D printer to print like miniature models of any of the Parisian buildings. I think that's fantastic. It's useful even when I'm in Taiwan. So uh, I'm probably going to advocate something like that for Taipei also. But uh, in addition to that, I learned something uh, from the Paris is that this time especially, the district um, people, as well as the Hotel de Ville, the city people, encouraged people with different ideas who overlap a little bit to collaborate and form a more uh, wholesome idea um, that attracts more people to vote. So um, one of the ideas that I looked at, and also I think people in Australia was doing, was to give each tree in the street an email address so that people can write to the trees just in the, in the front door and saying hi or sharing their uh, feelings or sharing uh, the, the health of the tree and so on. And the magic is the tree actually writes back. Um, of course, it's the people, you know, the, the city staff uh, writing on behalf of the trees. But I think this is a very good ecological sample of letting people know that not only people have a voice, uh, usually um, the people who have a voice are people who are able to speak for themselves. But if people could speak also for the trees, for the rivers, uh, for the environment as a whole, and so on, and get accustomed of the ideas that all these biological beings are part of the environment, I think it will move the entire uh, idea of the city as a place where we live together, instead of just in, as individuals visiting and so on. Uh, it will solidify the ecosystem and the ecosphere of the entire city, regardless of which city it is. And make people maybe a little bit more awareness about their environment mm -hmm. and not only their routine in their everyday lives. Exactly. I think what you are raising as an idea is a real philosophy of life. Mm -hmm. And I know, talking about this, uh, in Paris, you also had the opportunity to meet some philosophers mm -hmm. and some sociologists. And I'm a very curious person. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask you, what are the topics you had the chance to discuss with them, what mm -hmm. were the ideas that were raised, maybe a few of them, and who did you have the chance to meet during mm -hmm. your stay in Paris? Right, so uh, Professor saint Mer introduced uh, a lot of people, um, mostly sociologists, but also, as you said, philosophers uh, of science, of internet, and so on, and we have uh, a series of meetings and interviews and discussions and debates. And the most impressive for me was the debates, because uh, people were just very frank, and uh, the critiques and so on were very... Um, uh, so intense that I feel like maybe I'm doing a thesis defense. And so um, th this was very impressive and I got a lot of very useful critique to the idea of the coherent blended volition that I'm trying to develop. Um, so for example, people raised about the idea of censorship of self-censorship of the working class because they don't they don't have the courage or they don't have the um, habit of uh, things that they say or they express will actually make a difference. This is what we call learned helplessness and so on. So I was uh, brought uh, on the both philosophical and also sociologist side of the aspects of the theory that I'm trying to develop. And uh, I, I am very sincerely grateful to all the professors and all the PhD students who offered uh, me the critiques and their appreciation of the uh, things that I'm developing. I think it's a mutual exchange, so I guess they are as happy as you are to actually have me so. here as well. Uh, as you said, you are going twice a year mm -hmm. in Paris. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever thought yet? Have you have? Did you have thought yet uh, about your next trip to Paris mm -hmm. in March? And what are you planning to do there? Right. So um, previously, my understanding of the Paris city was pretty topological. It's basically the metro lines and uh, uh, the metro stops, actually just like in Taipei, right? Uh, but this time, thanks to the participatory budget program, I see for the first time the neighborhoods, uh, which may or may not have a metro station, uh, they are raising awareness for their parks, for their schools, and for their different communities, the things they need, for education, for the environmental awareness, 
and so on. So I think one of the things that I will do uh, in Paris when I visit on March is to actually drive Autolib, uh, which is pollution free, and uh, visit the, the spots where the, the participatory budgets program did get passed, because I know that they will get stamped with a PP stamp that this was built by the volition of people, and see how the actual neighborhoods are interacting with the project they have uh, brought upon, and how the continuation, how the space is creating a, a ongoing discussion of the next year's uh, participatory budget programs. And who knows, maybe I'll start to collaborate with the local associations a little bit more and to try to bring more projects into the next September's participatory budget program. Thank you very, very much, Audrey, for sharing all these very interesting experiences with us. Mm -hmm. And we'll just follow you and see what what you were doing in March, by then we'll just keep in touch. Thank you very much.